Okay, so let's see. Um, yes, today we uh, discuss or talk about uh, object detection and matching, uh, mostly used in pick and place application sorting and uh, many other applications around uh, mesh and vision, not only for these parts, but it's very often used for that. Um, so let's have a short intro into EVT. Hope most of you have attended any of the before webinars so that you know nearly everything. I see one of you are you. So anyway, for this for attendant, I will shortly go over the stuff from EVT. Then we have also, as always, a short intro to iVision software. Would be also a little bit faster than all. all uh, all the other webinars before. And uh, finally, uh, we look to the different image sensors which could be used, only a rough overview for all who need more uh, information about the supported hardware. I would recommend our presentation uh, about the hardware, uh, supported hardware for the iVision software. Uh, we Either we send it out, I don't know it for the moment, or we will send it out later uh, so that you can download it and have a look to all the different hardware uh, components like uh, 1D, 2D cameras, smart cameras, vision sensors. Maybe um, the people who attended yesterday saw that we uh, all the different the smart camera and embedded platforms. And of course, you have an overview of, of all the um, uh, 1 and 2D uh, standard camera manufacturers which are supported I think this nearly all and uh, finally also the 3D thermal and hyperspectral camera manufacturers so after the, um, this basic uh, in, uh, view to the sensors we will have a look to the object detection uh, tools for 2D, 3D, and also our latest development in deep learning, object detection by deep learning. Of course, it can be used, and in um, some cases, it's uh, more powerful, or it's, it's an uh, additional option to use deep learning for object detection. I show you some examples. Um, uh, of course, you should have a download link on, if not, you can get it uh, always from the iVision software and can do the tests by yourself. Simply uh, that you can see uh, uh, how powerful the different tools are. I think especially uh, also the deep learning uh, based uh, object detection is, an, is a good option for um, many cases. We can have uh, another, another few words later on this. Um, then we have a short look to hand-eye calibration as the basic for pin picking or any kind of robot uh, vision, whatever robot means. Uh, it's also uh, some X, Y, Z manipulators or so. And um, uh, this is the uh, following uh, of the object detection and some uh, 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 matching tool, the use of the matching tool in a correlation to a robot. That's why we have here this robot <laughs> on the page uh, only to show, yes, robot vision is an important part for um, match and detect, but it's also simple, uh, interesting if you simply uh, want to pack things and check if they are uh, uh, in the right position on your uh, tray or wherever. So finally, some examples. Uh, we have some deeper in few, uh, uh, um, I uh, look into these examples later. So starting with the iVision, uh, with EVT and iVision products, um, I think most of you know it. Uh, we are located in Karlsruhe and we sell our distributors uh, around the world. We have subsidiary in Korea. So if you're in Asia, uh, you're welcome to directly call uh, Korea to have a better and easier approach uh, to that region from uh, the time schedule. Um, where we are located, where the main office is located in Gartenstrasse 626 in Karlsruhe, it's downtown, easy to reach from highway train station 
or the Caltrain Airport, of course, because train station means also uh, the airport Frankfurt, which is well known. So we founded in 1999. We have 21 staff members in our main office where I'm right now. Uh, we are we have the sales support and office um, the downtown. It's in, we have nine members and we have 12 development members in our development division close to the KIT. Uh, we sell through a network uh, either direct um, or uh, if it's uh, not Germany. We sell our distributors and integrators, and we do support OEM customers who want to make a solution based on the iVision software. So our key product is the iVision software. Uh, what does this mean? We have one software, you will see it very soon, and that's why I also could uh, change between, uh, let's say, 2D, 3D, or deep learning matching tools. There is only one software, uh, which we in, in which we built all the tools in, uh, in so that you can simply switch between uh, the different tools and use the best fitting tool for your task. Uh, especially, um, uh, you don't have to, to learn another software if you have another task. Maybe you have to learn a new tool because it's different between 2D and 3D and deep learning, of course, but all the interaction and transformations and uh, and so on still stays the same or especially if you want to manipulate a robot you have exactly one tool because manipulation of the robot is the same in all uh, situations or the, uh, the maybe plc connection if you want to use profinet or profibus uh, profinet profibus of course uh, um, uh, modbus or whatever you have the tools and they are always the same because it's the same software. And what we can do is, um, if, you, uh, uh, if it's needed to make a OEM solution, you can get also a OEM software version. Um, uh, and uh, also we can uh, tailor made a OEM software so that it fits exactly to the needs of the uh, customer. Of course, uh, beside of the software of our software development, this is our uh, uh, key product. We do also uh, develop some specialized uh, uh, machine vision hardware. Um, so we therefore we develop some uh, smart cameras, but only the ones which we don't, which we cannot buy. So mostly we support a lot of smart camera. And additionally, we, for example, developed the line scan smart camera because there was no one, no, not, no such camera in the market or a smart 3D sensor. Um, the same, uh, you could get a lot of 3D sensors, but of course, a smart one was not possible. And uh, therefore, we have the capability to make uh, this kind of special hardware. Uh, this would also be, uh, include uh, generating some special light uh, or I.O. capabilities to fit in uh, OEM uh, machines. And uh, finally, uh, for, yes, for the OEM solutions, we can tailor made the hardware to fit inside of it. Um, how do we sell our software? So as you see, uh, software is our key product. I think it's clear. Uh, we sell it uh, either in bundles, uh, uh, so that uh, you can easily get a fitting bundle to the needs you want to solve if you're an integrator. Uh, or we can add the tools based on tool basis uh, to each of the uh, different packages. That means if you start with a 3D uh, point cloud package, uh, like 3D, I wish 3D area, we point cloud, we name it area. Um, then, and you need maybe for some reason um, another tool because you have a suddenly uh, additionally to the 3D stuff uh, to inspect the color of the part. You can add a color camera and you simply add the color tools to your 3D, um, uh, uh, to your 3D license because it's always the same software and it's easy to attach, to add these tools to each of the different uh, software packages. Um, finally, to make it easier and to, um, to meet the needs in the market uh, or some special hardware needs, 
We have also smart cameras, smart camera solutions and vision sensors. This means uh, the same software runs in the smart camera or in a vision sensor. We, uh, the smart camera systems are called iCheck and the vision sensors iSense that this is a smart camera platform uh, for uh, which we support with the, with the still um, integrated iVision software or uh, activated iVision software so that you simply can attach the camera, power it up, uh, program it with the user interface and that's it. So uh, here is a very short overview about, uh, a limited overview about, uh, for example, smart cameras. We have much more about uh, 30 smart cameras are supported for the moment. Uh, we also support a lot of 3D sensors, much more than this here. This is only an overview. And of course you can use any PC or embedded system uh, with an ARM or x86 with the standard interfaces to simply use uh, standard cameras from all major manufacturers. The software for the user normally uh, uh, starts uh, similar to this one. You have on the left side always uh, the toolbar, the toolbox. Uh, in the center you have the program editor which is graphically programmed from the toolbar. And then you have uh, one or more uh, camera viewers for the uh, connected cameras you use. You also can mix up the cameras so you can use gray color, 3D hyperspectral terminal camera in one application. There is no restriction to one camera type, even if you see it here. And of course, all the other infrastructure information is uh, also available and can be used with the iVision software, like, uh, for example, statistic stuff, IO stuff, direct IO, or uh, Profinet and uh, some other interfaces. Um, the software is available mainly in German, of course, English, French, and Spanish. We also support our, our main uh, other languages beside of German and English is Chinese, Korean, Japanese. Of course, French and Spanish is also important. And we do have for um, some reasons, also Turkish and Russian as an additional language. Optionally, it's possible to get any language, but these are our main supported languages which uh, are immediately available. If you simply press the flag button and select the language, then you change to the uh, desired target language. Where well, the market, I think you could understand this um, uh, vision tools really don't care so much about the, <laughs> the target industries. So nearly every industry and why? Because whatever the industry are doing, it's something with measuring, detecting, searching, color inspection, matching, reading, uh, 3D analysis, or uh, the latest uh, uh, development, of course, is also deep learning. And uh, normally you, can f you could f uh, find us on different exhibitions. Um, the last two years, uh, the, the last year and this year, it's not so <laughs> easy to find us on exhibitions. We uh, attended some virtual shows uh, with uh, more or less uh, uh, happiness. Um, I hope maybe we can see us if you come to uh, the Vision Stuttgart or maybe uh, if it, ha uh, if it uh, happened, the ITE show in December in Yokohama. Uh, we, are, uh, we hopefully look that we can travel then to Yokohama and exhibit also there. Maybe the Craft AI, AI also uh, is available. We are still waiting for the uh, for for the American um, government to allow us to enter the uh, the U.S. So this was a short overview uh, about uh, the EVT and what today will uh, will happen uh, the next uh, now one and a half hours. So uh, here, uh, recapitulating, recapitulating um, what we are doing is object detection and matching. Uh, have a look to the sensors, uh, I vision structure, what I told you before. Um, I think you saw uh, the instruction set. And uh, of course, you find all the infrastructure in instruction sets. And um, yeah, within these instructions that you find uh, the 
uh, object detection, uh, object, the classic object detections based on blobs, for example. Uh, then the matching, uh, the contour matching tools in 2 and 3D. And uh, of course, the latest development is the deep learning uh, stuff we do have. Um, uh, here is an actual user interface uh, related to what we saw before uh, with uh, different tools. Uh, the iVision program editor, in this case, a 3D image and how it works. So beside of this, and depending what you want to do, you have either a gray or color image at the end, uh, a 3D image, or of course you could do it also in a depth image. And because the tools don't care, you could also use a thermal image uh, to do object detection um, because uh, the tools don't care if the image uh, is generated based on heat or on light or uh, on any other information. So um, I just mentioned it, the, the software runs on all our supported platforms. That means um, you have the smart cameras, the vision sensors, and uh, of course all other uh, systems to which you can connect either one uh, cameras over the standard interfaces like Geeky USB 3, or if you have an embedded, embedded platform, you could use also the MIPI interface. And, um, um, and of course, for high-speed applications, we still support um, plugin boards to use cameras with camera link or Quarkspress interfaces. So uh, the time is just changing the, the high-speed interface from camera link as long as we can say high-speed uh, to Quarkspress. It's much faster and cheaper uh, in cable performance for these kind of solutions. Um, that's what I said just for a moment. So uh, let's have a look to the iVision software right now and see how we can do, uh, let's say, matching uh, applications. And uh, we start with 2D and then we have a look to 3D. And uh, after that, we could have a look to um, we can have a look to the deep learning stuff. So uh, after you have installed the software, you will reach um, in this uh, menu here, um, it, um, or in this situation, mainly you have uh, the tool set on the left side. You can uh, open, it, open it and see uh, the tools you want to use. Today we will have a very close look to the matching tools in the 2D area. And we also will have a look uh, to the matching tools in the 3D area. And finally, we will do have a look to the, uh, 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 to the tool in the uh, object detection uh, area. Uh, also object detection based on, um, on deep learning. So let's start well, uh, with the 2D stuff. Uh, maybe a short uh, explanation how the iVision software works. And um, so after you have downloaded it and you, uh, you have downloaded the iVision software for Windows or Linux, you should install it uh, on Windows. It's easy. You simply start the setup process. Um, uh, of course, if you download the full Linux package, you get also a f uh, automatic installation script, which installs it on your Linux desktop. Uh, finally, on embedded system, you get the option to install a runtime system on the embedded system. As far as the embedded system doesn't have a user interface, means a monitor, a keyboard, and mouse connected, then you can, uh, there is a description how to install the software on this target or remote device. Uh, mostly uh, uh, the, the embedded, um, the smart cameras, nearly all smart cameras doesn't have the option for a, a connection of a monitor and mouse. Uh, they, are, they are mostly headless, and, uh, but you could use 
each of the other systems, even a PC headless, and do a remote programming with the remote version of the software. Uh, that's why I just mentioned it. After installing the iVision software, so you can install different versions of it, you have the iVision icon and the iVision remote icon. This is what you get automatically uh, if you didn't, uh, if you allow it, the installation script, you have it on your Windows desktop, like you, we have it here, or you have it on your Linux desktop um, if you uh, install the Linux version. For the runtime version, of course, um, there is a special script which can install it on the target platform. And then you use for programming of the embedded remote system, the iVision remote. I explained it yesterday how this works. Uh, so I hope everybody who is, was or is interested in remote programming attended it. Um, if you missed it, it's not a problem. We still have converted the uh, webinar from yesterday into a video and you can find it on our YouTube channel. So you simply can uh, have a look to that, to our yesterday um, webinar and see what, how I explain, how, uh, where I explained how to use it. So uh, after you installed it, of course, you have these two. Today we use the standard version. That means the software runs on the same, um, on the same system as the user interface is. And um, uh, if, if you work uh, sometimes with the software, you can define how it uh, starts up. In this case, uh, he uses the, la the, the last um, uh, development um, or the last uh, test which uh, you made. Uh, you can control everything of, uh, of these behaviors in the application parameters. So uh, let's have a look to the application parameters, especially you can see here um, what should be the startup program. Here we say last program, that's why we have here uh, this program. And you can say, okay, what should be the last project? It's a recent project, uh, this was the one which I worked before. Um, what is a project? Let's have a look to it in a second, because a project stuff is really interesting and it makes it much easier for you to, to learn more about the software and how we would use the software or how to make things. Uh, that's why we made this project. Of course, we made it first in the first order to allow you to have multiple different solutions on the same system uh, with all the stuff like user interface, calibration, or whatever you need. So we have a few words in a few seconds there before we start doing some object detection, because we start object detection also based on a new project so that you immediately see the advantages of that. So uh, here in application, you find all the uh, set, uh, settings you want to have. For example, the last language, you can also define a language uh, which you want to have always uh, independent. What was the last one? Um, and uh, you can also define, if you don't like our font, which we use, you can define the form. Uh, very important is the logger, which enables uh, you to see what happens in the software. And uh, more important is also, uh, we know if you have a problem, we can help you based on the logging files, what's going on. And um, here you can control the logging files. You have a look to the logger uh, immediately so that you can see it uh, here, this is a log file. And you see, uh, we just started the software and we get a lot, if uh, depending on the uh, level we have, uh, we get a lot of information, beginning with the uh, iVision version, uh, all the hardware which is connected. And of course, if all the uh, insta initialization works or not, or uh, for example, if you have a P an, an IO module and um, it's not, available for the moment, then you see it immediately in red. Okay, it's there or it's not there. This will help you if something is not working, simply look to the red ones and uh, uh, fix it. And finally, if you cannot fix it or you, it's not unclear, you send us the log file. You simply can save the log file and send it to us and we can help you. So that's why the logger is so important. 
So here you can also control the program editor, the history files of your programs so that you can go always back a few steps if you made an error or so. And of course, we just had a look to the recent project, uh, to what, how you to start up the software, for example. In the second uh, part, the project settings, uh, the, uh, you do some basic um, settings about uh, 3D, for example, which is general used, or here you can set how many image memories you want to use. Uh, normally, you, uh, it's only one image memory opened, but you can uh, generate as many you want, or normally as many as fit in your main memory. Uh, normally, uh, if you have, a, uh, for example, an embedded system or smart camera with very uh, limited uh, memory, so the number of maximum image memories is restricted on a PC. We start normally with 30, but you can enter any other number as long as it fits to your main memory. Uh, because uh, if it's not in the main memory, it's the system has to uh, store it anywhere else. And uh, so you have also some uh, additional overlay stuff. The important thing is uh, when you start with the application, or uh, you, of course, maybe you want to capture images from a real camera and by heart, it works also with the demo version. You see here, we use also today a demo version for our uh, webinar. This is to show you, you can do everything with a demo version. The first thing what you would do is you go to, pro, you, you say, okay, I have a project and I want to use in this project a camera which is supported. So uh, that means um, normally, of course, we support also Geek e uh cameras with the uh, standard Geek e um interface. But uh, for most manufacturers, um, we have also the native driver. This means the driver which the manufacturer uh, develops and supports. Uh, this is not because we like to program a lot. Uh, if you need all the specialties of the cameras, it's mostly easier or it works mostly smoother if you use the native driver of the manufacturers. And you see here, we have from Allied Vision uh, over Basler, Bauma and so on to uh, until Civit, um, uh, Civit Lab, this is a 3D sensor. You can simply select the fitting um, camera manufacturer and can use their native driver. So that you can, if you have a camera handy around from one of these manufacturers, you simply select it, apply, uh, apply the driver, means uh, say Basler, and you press select. And then uh, the system, uh, installs all the driver. Here you see what you have to do uh, for Windows. You should install the fitting Highland driver because we are related to this one and we didn't have it in the package to uh, uh, keep this setup small uh, due to all the manufacturers. And you, or if you have a, a Linux version, you find here what you have to install on Linux that we, you can use this driver. Um, if you have a Windows or a Linux system, and you have simply a normal uh, webcam like the one uh, which is in the, in the laptop or uh, you have it for your web conference, you can select on Windows Direct Show. If you have a Linux system, you will find instead of Direct Show uh, here, Video for Linux. And you can use these cameras instead of, um, of any machine vision camera. To simply check if the software can do it, what you want to do, is also a webcam uh, uh, still a very good option, especially the cameras are not so bad today to, sim uh, to do simple checks uh, if it works or not. But finally, you have the option to use your target camera and test it even with the demo version. So this is a really important pass, uh, part of the software. Uh, if you select the camera, you can work with the camera. So for the moment, I keep it on offline. Offline means you can read the, uh, the, the, uh, the images from a file. Uh, this is always possible. And of course, you can also use different uh, hardware tools, uh, hardware I.O. modules to uh, connect to um, some uh, I.O. system. Uh, finally, we also have these um, 
communication. Uh, that means uh, if you want to use uh, Profinet, Ethercard, Modbus, Ethernet IP, MQ MQTT, OPC UI, and so on, you simply can uh, de uh, define here which one you want to use for which for what kind of uh, uh, communication, uh, either for program control or for data communication. Um, program control means you can control the iVision software uh, also over these networks. That means all the two, all the uh, you can do program changes. You can change parameters of the tools and so on over one of these networks, um, so that you have remotely access to each part of the software. Uh, so you have to enable the fitting um, tool. Uh, there's a fitting uh, interface and then you can use it in your application. So this was a short uh, intro to, uh, to the uh, different hardware options. And um, now let's have a look to the project folder. What is a project folder? I will open one and explain then what, what does it mean. So let's have, um, Let's have this area matching example. As I told you, uh, now you see the area matching uh, example is opened up. You see you have a different back, uh, background. We have uh, different uh, uh, orientation of the, of the program editor and we have one camera viewer. So you, you are free to arrange everything. You can generate a lot of menus and everything with the tool to make a ready to use solution. Um, and, but the first thing is simply, if you make a project, everything what is related to this project is in one project folder. Um, if you want to see where the project folder is, you simply uh, go to file and show data directory. Then you are in the program data directory where we have stored it. So, on Windows, it's in program data, EVTI vision. Normally, if you didn't do anything, the program data is a hidden uh, folder. That means uh, program data contains all the installed um, application and the data for these. Um, and uh, of course, ours. And therefore, you we uh, that you find it and you don't have to activate uh, uh, or unhide the program data, we give you the option to go directly to our uh, data directory. There you find here uh, the basic settings of the software, uh, but more important, you find the project folders. And as you saw, we have the 2D area matching. Uh, if you remember, maybe we went into 2D area examples and here we have 2D area matching. And if you open up this, we see here, this is a set of folders uh, which is needed uh, for each solution. So we would say uh, um, a project contains everything for one solution. If you have one or multiple programs, you find all the programs in the programs folder. If you have some stored images, either you store it from the camera, what we recommend all sometimes, or for uh, you have some intermediate data, and you do and you simply use save image. You will find it automatically in the image fold in the images uh, folder, and so on. If you have some different uh, layouts, so this is a simple layout without a button, or so the layout you find the layouts in layout, and so on. This means everything is connected. Uh, everything what, what belongs to this system is here in this folder. Here we see also the software has a built-in web server. That means if you activate in uh, application parameters a web server, you can have for each project also a web interface. So we can have a look at it in a few seconds if you're interested in when we have when we have a short look to a short to a more complex user interface simply to show you. Um, that it's possible to, uh, what, what's possible. Uh, and um, the good thing is here now, uh, that's why I mentioned this project uh, stuff. Um, you, you can prepare everything for a customer or uh, to demonstration, 
but uh, you have always uh, a complete um, uh, backup of of your project. If you say if you save the project folder, uh, you can um, uh, use it as a recovery. If your target system crashes, you have everything here. You don't have to think, oh, what, what do I have to save uh, uh, for, for this special project? Maybe you have three different cameras from three different manufacturers with all the settings and everything. Everything is stored in the project folder. Uh, especially also, and here is the advantage, um, on a, on a target, on a, uh, if you are not working on the on the user interface version like this one here, if you work on the remote system, you sim uh, uh, we simply copy internally for you without uh, knowing this all the information from uh, this folder to the target for, uh, embedded system and force it back, so that um, you have also also an, Im uh, an image from the target system, and that's how it's synchronized between all the systems. Um, there are also some uh, YouTube files about this and why it is. So that's why I do it a little bit faster today. But maybe uh, if you have questions, simply feel free to ask. Um, yes, so we see here we have all the stuff inside. And for example, if you open this, we see here we have uh, 10 images. That means if we want to test uh, the, uh, something, we can uh, use the load image uh, with, uh, we can use instead of capturing load image, cyclic, the complete folder. And uh, for each turnaround, for each, uh, if the software runs, uh, each time it arrives at a position, it simply uh, uh, gets another image. So this is, nearly like you have a simulated camera. You don't have to move it always. It's, it's enough if you build your setup, capture the image, different images, and then you can work with these captured images instead of uh, always moving the part. Or you simply uh, add the camera to your machine and run the machine for a while, capture the images, and then you can work on these captured images so that you don't have to stay at the machine for the programming. So you can do all the programming on the stored images. This is valid for all kinds of cameras, gray, color, 3D, thermal, hyperspectral. Uh, you can do it always the same way. So that's why we use this project folder. And more important, you should have, uh, we should have sent you, if not, let me know. Uh, we should have sent you also the links for the 2D area examples um, and uh, thermal examples, the 3D area, a 3D area, 3D profile, as well as the robot vision uh, examples or general com uh, communication. That enables you simply, uh, if you have a task and you say, oh, I want to do some matching and you think, ah, maybe how, how, would, how should the matching tool work? You could simply open for example, this matching tool, I think there should could be some, uh, it's only a simple match program here. Um, and you see, ah, okay, um, the matching tool uh, works like this because you have, uh, you see, you have to select uh, a part or a complete um, uh, a part of the, of the part or the complete part for the matching. You see what kind of, um, <laughs> Uh, of settings we do use here uh, and um, uh, so that you have a, a direct solution uh, for the first steps. Um, it's, in my opinion, it's always easier um, to work with, with a predefined solution than starting by scratch. Scratch simply have the, 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 the tool set, the program editor, and a camera view and you don't see anything. Um, this, uh, in my opinion, it's really difficult. Or for example, uh, this is not a matching thing, but uh, only to show you how to make a user interface. And you see, uh, uh, we, we made for this one here a little bit more complicated, not so nice. Or it depends on how what, what is nice or what's not nice. You see here, this is one example for a user interface, you have a start and a stop button. And of course, this is now here 
a display that it's a demo version. That means all the IO operations are not working always. Uh, but you see here, you have a start and stop button, first of all. And uh, for all IO operation, sometimes they are done or not. Uh, so you have, for example, also this uh, configuration button, which enables you to make a configuration menu so that uh, would the result, for example, you can give the user of the system, for example, sliders or spin boxes or all the other kind of stuff. And finally, you could also say, okay, I want to give the user an option to go back to the programming mode. And then we can start with the programming. Uh, where we was before. So you see, this is always the same software and you have also the option to make this kind of uh, menus. Um, now, now we see also, I said all IO operations are limited working on, um, on, a, uh, on a demo version, but you can test it. So uh, here we see, oh, uh, if we run it, we see we, we transfer the images. So we have the option to send the images anywhere. And not always uh, we do it, or the software doesn't do it always. It does it sometimes or not, which means uh, for IO operation for a machine, it's difficult, um, but it's enough to see, okay, in principle, it's working. If you plug in the dongle, it's working without this window, you, the full communication is working. What we are doing here is, for example, and I mentioned it before, we have this um, uh, built-in web editor, and so therefore we provide the image to the web server uh, that you can have a nice web interface. And therefore we have to have a look to the application parameters and we have to look to the web server and we see, okay, the web server is still activated and running. That's nice because we don't have to do it again. So uh, to show you how it works, you use any kind of um, browser my preferred browser is in this case Firefox, but you could use also uh, the whatever, uh, the new uh, Windows uh, Explorer or anything else. So if you know the, the, you know, uh, the, the IP address, you simply end, uh, um, you simply use uh, one, one uh, the local loop address, zero, zero, one, and we define for a 8080. And then we get the web interface for this, uh, uh, for this uh, small application we made. You see, you can control the complete software from the web interface. Um, so it's very fast to also add this for whatever application you do. If it's this one or the other one, we have this web server built in and you have this option to make it and you see here it now you can uh, reach the software from anywhere in the web as long as it's connected to the web and uh, do this. So you have also the option to make the um, program, the program parameters you saw in the configuration. This is a web interface. The user who want to use it has to make it. Uh, this was only a short uh, only to give you the idea you have all these things. So now let's say we want to do some object match matching in 2D before, of course, we have some pre, uh, prepared, um, uh, prepared uh, projects as you saw it before. Uh, let's see. Uh, da -dum -da -dum. Yes, this was a folder. So if you go to, pro, uh, to the area, you see here, we have a lot of pre predefined um, uh, 2D um, solutions. And uh, so if you, for example, uh, if you go to code reading, you see a lot of code reading stuff or a color inspection, um, the same. And so industry beverage, you have, for example, also from some special industries, some ready-made ready, ready -made, um, examples and so on. Also for machine learning and uh, measure and calibration. If you want to do some measuring and calibration, we have a look to this uh, a little bit further, but if you have any kind of task you want to do, it's very valuable to simply open up one of these projects and see how we did it. Uh, uh, it's much easier than starting by scratch. 
So let's uh, start with a new, uh, start with a gray uh, application for a new project. So we start with new project. And the first thing is, of course, we have to name it. So we can say here, um, uh, 2D, I like to name it to know it, what's going on 2D, it's a 2D thing. And uh, we say web match. Webinar, yeah. We say match or whatever. So um, now it asks us if uh, the changes in this program should be uh, safe, stored or not. We simply say no and um, a fresh uh, new um, a fresh new project is generated. You see here on top the name of the project. Um, and of course, we could start with an image acquisition. Um, and of course, uh, in this case, if you say load an image, unfortunately, because it's a new project, we don't have an image here inside. So we have to think about it. Uh, we could also use the capture image, I think, if we run it. And if I look to the camera, so we see me now in this case, and um, or my hand, or whatever we have, or uh, we could use this one here. You see here, it's, yes. This is, um, so, so if you connect the camera to the system, you get immediately uh, an image. For our presentation today, or for our, for our first project today, I would simply use one of, the, of our training, um, training images. Uh, you can find these if you have installed them in PC local, this is a standard folder. And we use maybe training one, um, or some of these, and we simply go back to our, uh, let's say, project. And we now we're looking for XX2D, so XX is at the end of the folder. It's very easy to find here. This is our new project. Of course, we don't have images here, so we simply add the images to the folder. Uh, of course, you can also save, uh, like you can, load uh, capture images, you can save it. So that's how the images came to the folder. And we say, as we saw it before, cyclic complete folder and we say, yes, training. And based on this, if you run it now, we see we simply load each time a, a new image. This is like uh, you have a camera and the part is moving on under the camera or uh, and you capture the images. So that's why we recommend normally, if you work with the software and you want to make a new project, connect the uh, uh, attach the camera to your uh, to your machine with all the stuff, um, attach the trigger and run the machine for a while with the real parts, store them, and then you can then you have the real parts to make the program. That's how we do it right now. Uh, we but we use the pre-stored program uh, pre-stored images. Let's say we start uh, first with our uh, standard object counter. This is uh, also an object matching tool. So you can simply, um, it's, uh, you can simply define, do we want to see the white objects or the black objects? And based on that, you can, uh, you get the information of the tool, um, of, the re of the results. Uh, so where, where, are they stored for the moment? Because to get, uh, first of all, to find the, the date the objects is nice, but more interesting is um, what do we get? So now we see we have three objects. We have, uh, and here we are, we have, we have the X, Y points of the, ob uh, of the object tool. Um, Yes, why do we have three? Because we selected white, and white is also the surrounding. Uh, so you can, uh, the boundary part, it's a boundary object, so you can ignore these, and you have still two, and you can work with these, or you can use only the objects you have. Or if you want to 
uh, simply uh, use the black object uh, for your task and count only the black ones. Simply select uh, the object. As you can see, uh, it's not depending on a special color. If you have a gray value, it would also work on the gray value. Uh, here you see also this image is stored to save space as a JPEG file. Um, that mean that's our these are these uh, these brick like uh, artifacts here in the image. Um, so if you if you want to measure very precisely or work with things uh, exactly, uh, we don't we recommend not the JPEG format. In most cases, it's okay to um, do the programming and everything. It uh, was only explanation why we have this problem here. Or it's not a problem, it's simply an artifact. Um, but anyway, it works. And now we see we have one object and we see exactly where the object is. So if we only have to count or see if there is one object, so we, we nearly finished, we could say, as you see, uh, we, ha we are green. That means as long as there is one object, let's go here. And we say one object plus one object minus one object. Uh, as long as there is one object, um, we have the this uh, we have this uh, good value here. It's green. If we if we expect that we have two objects, for example, um, and there are no two objects, then you see it's red. Of course, we only have one uh, one black object here. Uh, so we never get it. So we can change in this case and say, okay, we, we need these two objects and then we are on the good side to uh, work on this one here. So this is uh, the, simple ver the simple way how the basic programming of the iVision software is done. Um, I think may maybe most of you know the software a little bit. Uh, I simply give you some hints. Um, if you don't know how, how um, instruction works, of course, we have this installed manual as a PDF. Or, in my opinion, uh, what's more helpful is, I close these two, is the online help. So you simply press the button, you simply open up the tool, you immediately get uh, the online help for the tool. And this belongs to everything what you are doing here. So you have all the information handy immediately so that you can work with these tools. Uh, beside of the project, this helps a lot if you start with a new project. So what normally, um, what we normally do, you saw it in most of the other projects, we, we uh, define a background. So you can, as you saw in the project, automatically install is our standard background. If you store your here, if you store here your image of the background, you have it also handy and can select it. And then um, it looks maybe at the beginning somewhat nicer. So uh, we start mostly with one uh, background screen. Um, and uh, this is the development screen for programming. And uh, now, uh, and you can say, okay, we want to show, see this screen all time we start up with this project. So that you have exactly what you see now. Uh, this, this means uh, this screen, this uh, setting are now for the for all the parts in your field of view. For example, if you open up here uh, the process capability additionally, and you open up maybe also uh, or you add also uh, mm -hmm. some uh, GUI parts like a start button or a stop button. Um, you also store the location and uh, the, the, the buttons at the location. So now you also know immediately how to make the different user interfaces. Simply you uh, load these and then uh, you, you place, you add these, your, your uh, structural elements and you simply, and you, you simply store these elements uh, in uh, in the design in in the layout design. That means if you need different layouts, you simply store different layouts. And uh, after you have stored these different layouts, you can also recall these. Either you do it manually over the Windows menu, 
as you see it here. You have here the, the layout selector or uh, what you saw before in this small demo with the web, um, web gear. Uh, you can also change between the layouts simply adding this to the to a button uh, therefore you can make as many layouts and therefore as many user interfaces with different interactions uh, for uh, for your uh, application this is independent of matching or whatever so you see it works immediately and you have these buttons you can switch off everything else so you have at the end only the start stop button and maybe the statistics and now we see here, of course, we have these uh, two, maybe we have to check if there are two holes in a part. So this is a simple matching uh, or, uh, um, or object counting um, to say, okay, I need a big or small object. You can also, for the moment, it doesn't have any feature for, for the object. So you could do this also in, in two parts. That means if you say, okay, I need a big and a small, um, object. Um, in that case, you have to add the tool twice. Um, you simply limit the um, uh, uh, yeah limit the one which is detected. So, like we said, okay, we are we, here. We we say what color we do we search for, and here we can say okay, we search only for an object with the size. And of course, if it's too small for you, for you or for me, you simply increase it. You could also print it additionally. Um, then you simply get the area of the tool of this uh, smaller object. So that means that you can simply select between the big one and the small one. So we, we see here, it's a really uh, wide difference. So you simply give them the lower number of white pixels and the upper number of the area pixels of the smaller object, let's say, with the tolerance, it's 1600, let's say 1800, to have some tolerances. And finally, we have only one object. Of course, we see, oh, we are red. That means now we are looking for one small object. And therefore, we, we have this test for the small one. And we do now the same for the big one. And uh, therefore, we go to in the uh, go in the future set. We simply switch off and simply make display. Now we see the big one is three thousand two hundred and somewhat. In that case, it means three thousand one hundred to have some tolerance. Uh, maybe uh, either you have a feeling for it or you simply run it, uh, put it in a statistic, and see the difference. And we say three thousand one hundred and. 3,500. So if it's bigger, we don't want to know this object. So we do a test and we have this one. We're still uh, looking for one object with no tolerance. That's exactly what we want. So now uh, we can, now we, we have the, as a result of the test, we have two objects, the small one and the big one. This is really nice. Uh, in many cases, this is the application. If you have 10 or 20 of these, you simply have to say, okay, I want to have it. Um, you could also limit the search uh, area. So you say, okay, the small object, now we, we do it in the complete image, but you say, okay, uh, it's only good if the small, uh, the small uh, hole is in the upper part of the image or wherever it should be. You simply can attach, um, uh, define a new uh, image, a new area. So we don't uh, simply by uh, using this one and say, okay, it's only good if the small object is in this area. Now, right now we don't find any. So we can run it and uh, we have still, the small one is still wrong. And uh, unfortunately the search area for the small one is too small. So let's go so that we have sometimes a good uh, result. And we go through this and now we see, of course, the good one is in the right or in, in, in the right part of the search area. And always if the small, uh, the small uh, object is uh, below this, then we have an error. This uh, 
uh, might be one task you have to solve and it's very easy to do it. Um, so you, you can do this for all uh, kind. You could also say, okay, uh, I know I have um, here the a tray and uh, on the, up, uh, on the up, upper top area, there must be a small hole. Uh, and if there's no one, it's an error. You simply reduce the uh, reduce the search area to this position. Or as we have it at the very beginning, we say we want to do it in the complete image. Then as long as we find it uh, in the image, it's good. Um, yes, this let's say this is our first uh, small program. We name it. Uh, Simple object action. Um, so what we also could do in this case, we could say, okay, if you have these two objects, um, we we um, we can use this to do some more uh, stuff. Immediately, uh, of course, we get these two uh, blobs. Uh, in this to these two objects and we can do based on this uh, some additional uh, work uh, so now we can say okay if we have these two uh, holes because our production only produces this or either there is maybe a, a problem with the stamping machine one of, a hole, of the holes is missing then we don't do anything uh, then it means the detection is wrong uh, what would happen in this case um, so we, to show this, uh, we could also activate our manual window again. And, um, uh, and simply, or if the, uh, if the position of the part is, on, is wrong, like here, uh, we simply can do it at this way. And how to manage now what, that we can uh, generate an error in case of we are, um, if the small, if the small uh, object is on the wrong side, you simply add, and this, is, uh, not, this error handling should be done or have to be done uh, always. You have to select what to do. One, one would be, if you simply want to know are both uh, uh, bolts, uh, holes there with the right size, then you simply can say, okay, if both are there, I want to set an output. Um, this would be a very short, and it's this is something which is done in many of these vision sensors or smart cameras. They have a, PLC, a normal PLC IO 24 volt. Uh, you can say, okay, um, if if we have two times okay, then we would set the output to high, and we would do it permanent. So as long as uh, as it is, or we would say we do, uh, we set the output 100 milliseconds to one. So that means now if we run this um, and all time, each time we um, clear list, now we run it for a while on, so uh, each time, uh, each time we, we find this error, we set this output, this output um, uh, because we say, uh, not okay would be right, right? Uh, if we have a not okay, um, we want to set the output zero to high. So uh, uh, to to uh, to show the rest of the machine or so uh, that we have exactly this situation uh, that uh, we either we, uh, we, do, we we don't have two holes or uh, uh, the the small hole. Uh, like here is uh, outside of the search area. So this is the easiest way to signal something set directly in output uh, for 100 milliseconds. Uh, you could also make a handshake if you like, but this is really, really easy. If you want to debug this, you could uh, simply go to the PLCIO viewer and uh, so uh, we, uh, I didn't show it to you when, when we uh, selected the hardware, uh, but now we can have a look to, to the hardware configurator. Um, of course, you can, for the smart camera, it's pretty fine because the smart cameras are, uh, are limited based on the manufacturer. So you, 
you don't have to select the hardware manufacturer. In our case, we have the project and um, by default, we have the offline, the offline IO here. Offline IO means always we simulate some IOs, in this case, eight input and eight outputs, uh, so that uh, if you are offline from your machine or from your smart camera, you, you still have something where you can see if the IO is working. Um, and uh, so by default, we have always uh, offline for the, uh, for the project so that you can still see how it works. And uh, okay, uh, and now we wait for a second. And uh, if you run it now very fast, uh, we see um, here the output is set sometimes uh, to zero, uh, to one. Uh, of course, if you use simple outputs, you should uh, add this uh, at the beginning. Uh, okay, we want to have uh, the state zero to have um, a safe uh, state. And now we see here all time when it's wrong, we get here an uh, error output. Of course, we see here also that uh, the IO, um, if we uh, would exactly check it, we would see that not for each turnaround it would work. Why? Of course, we are in demo version and we don't do all IOs, but as uh, we can see, it works. And of course, if it's licensed, it works completely. This is only a short, uh, a short intro how to, uh, uh, how to make, for example, in this case, an error detection. You could also say, uh, if you want uh, to make it more complex, uh, for example, uh, Either you make it a subroutine or you do it, you do it in, in one main program. In this case, I would uh, prefer to do it in the main program. That means I say, um, I always say end of program first. Uh, that means uh, the uh, program runs to this point and then it starts on top again. If you don't do anything else, you could also make loops or so. And then you can add your error handling mark uh, here. <clears throat> And in case uh, there was an error, you could simply uh, print something like, uh, for example, error, or you could send it also over an interface to it. Uh, let's do it only in a, as a text now. We say error, so, and uh, we can also define where it should be. Let's say we print error in red. Uh, that looks great. So. In this case, uh, of course, we have to say uh, a jumping case not okay. If we, uh, we, if we have an error of total result of everything what was before, we simply jump to error. And um, if we run it, then uh, each time if we have this error, we would see, okay, we have an error, we have no error, no error, error, no error. And of course, you can imagine now you can do whatever you want if there's an error case. Um, this is a simple example of how to do this uh, by object, by a simple object detection. Uh, let's say the object detection in this case is the block tool. Either you use it for the two as we did it at the very beginning or you do it separately. Uh, of course, based on this, uh, in, in case if there is no error, you could use uh, the two blobs to do, for example, uh, uh, some more, for example, the, uh, then some measurements. Uh, therefore, to uh, do the measurements, you have to follow up the part. And in this case, you could use exactly the, this tool to uh, do this. And uh, we say we do the origin or uh, uh, orientation. Uh, we do it based on these two blobs, uh, we automatically uh, use it from the register. We saw the register. Uh, we have a special YouTube video, which I can recommend to uh, get more information about how to transfer information within the software and uh, uh, what are the options and what, when which option is better. So let's say we use the register option in this case and uh, of course, uh, to, to see that it works, we simply draw the coordinate system. So if we uh, run it now, 
we see as long as we have these two objects, in our case, we don't do it. And as long as we have the two objects, we have, we, we simply move the coordinate system into the part. So we have a coordinate system which is related to the part. And based on this, uh, we do only because it doesn't match to the uh, object detection, but simply to show how it works in principle, we use our, um, our, um, uh, we use our standard measuring tool. Uh, I think maybe if you was yesterday here, you saw uh, there as uh, you can, how do you can do any measurement. So if you have only a very uh, simple measurement, let's say we, do, we want to measure the distance between, let's make it, because yesterday I measured this for uh, whoever attended yesterday that you can see, can use it like a caliper. That's the idea behind of it. You can say test and we see now we're measuring this. We immediately get it in pixel. We have to calibrate it and then we get everything also in millimeters, inches or whatever you want to have. And uh, if we run it now, um, you see as long as we, of course, now we're in the error situation and as long as we are in a good situation, we uh, measure the, this small part and say now we have not only an object matching, uh, we match, okay, we have the right part here. And of course the distance in this case is also correct. Of course, we didn't set the tolerances. If you want to do this, you simply can say the last measurement is this one and we use some uh tolerance values tolerance values as long as this belongs to uh, these tolerances then we have also a good measured uh distance so therefore we have our first 2d matching and object object detection matching uh, both as a combined solution so the <clears throat> let's go Let's do another 2D stuff. In this case, uh, I simply save it uh, with another name. And we say um, for the object detection, uh, we use the matching tool, the control matching tool. Uh, um, so let's throw the stuff here away. Uh, I, I wouldn't add the I.O. stuff again because um, it's exactly the same as with the, um, with the blob tool. So I keep everything here and we use now, for example, this matching tool, this contour matching tool, the key match. Uh, we grab the reference uh, from, from the image. So either you use a part of the uh, part of the object or the complete object. This uh, depends on what is important for you. If you say, okay, for me it's important that this part, this part is always here and I need this, then you use this. If you say, oh, I want to, I need the complete part. You simply uh, use this one here. And um, of course, uh, first of all, we save the uh, pattern. We say whole. Whole, uh, whole part, part. and um, now if the, uh, of course the part is moving and you see we do the match for the whole part. Um, maybe to have a closer look to it, we shift this over, uh, use the space a little bit more. We didn't use the statistic until now. Maybe we use it now to see, uh, show you the statistic also. Yes, if you need a bigger button, you simply drag and draw it as you want to do it. And as I told you, if you change anything in the user interface, simply let the, uh, the, your system know, okay, that's what I want to save. Maybe we can save this also under a different name uh, because if we want to have different uh, user interfaces for this, I keep it with the same name for the moment. So finally, we are now at the right position and we do this matching and uh, why I do this. I simply want to name it, we say complete part. And um, I want to show you, of course, you could do this 
uh, also with uh, only a part of the part. Um, and therefore we say, I showed it to you, but uh, I think if you see it, it's better. You see, of course, if you use, use this, this uh, around part, it makes not much sin, sense because then, uh, of course, it finds the round part, it, but it cannot give you an orientation. So uh, as long as you, ne you need the orientation also, you need something which is not uh, symmetrical. So in this case, we use this one, uh, for example, but you can test it with everybody. You, can, you have downloaded the software and you're free to do the test by yourself then. Um, and of course, we use it, we run it on the complete image. And either you say uh, save this pattern or you say test and then uh, the system recognize, okay, you didn't save the pattern. So we say uh, well, part uh, 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 select, selection part of the part. Okay, the name is not very smart. Anyway, so now we have this one and uh, if you see, we still, uh, uh, the, the, the matcher simply finds it. Uh, part of, um, we, uh, finds it and, um, and detects it. And now we have exactly the same thing. We, we know the, the part is here. Uh, of course, if we use only part of the part, we only know this part of the part is here. Uh, if you use the full part, we know exactly this part is here. So it depends on what what the task is. Um, uh, you um, you have to select the right um, uh, the right stuff. I think uh, it's somewhat clear. Uh, simply to show you that uh, the same thing works like before. Uh, you you simply could also measure here the uh, similar or another thing. Uh, you simply use the same way. You say, okay, uh, do the calibration and we do the orientation and calibration. We use the same two registers. As I mentioned, there's a YouTube video. And uh, if we activate now the draw axis again, we see the part moves. We simply, um, the coordinate simply moves completely with the part. Therefore, because all the other tools now are related, or all the tools are related to the world coordinate system and the world coordinate system runs from the top left corner uh, now, into the, now into the part coordinate system. Uh, the, whatever tool you are using here, uh, the, the tool is also working. So uh, maybe to show you it at two options now, we now we, uh, do the measurement here at this po uh, position. Uh, so you could also move uh, this one here and this one here and this one here. Uh, not that you think it's fixed, you are free to do it. Um, it's only not necessary to show you what I want to do. That's why I didn't change it. So you simply use this one. And if you run it, you see uh, the measurement is done once again. But this works for all other tools uh, from uh, wherever they are. So in this case, for example, we want to do the uh, best, uh, do an automatic calculation of a fitting circle. Oh, I was too fast. Um, so then we have the fitting circle. So we can simply say, okay, we want to measure this diameter here. And uh, so we want to it, do it on the full circle. Let's say if you don't want to do it on a full circle, maybe it's interesting for this uh, section. We want to calculate uh, the best fit circle, which fits inside of this one. And uh, then we could do a test and we see, okay, we, it's not working. So why it's not working? Okay, there, is, there are some settings. Um, if you look to the uh, YouTube video about this comment, we are looking by default always um, to, uh, um, uh, to a dark object. And uh, of course, we are looking here also to a dark object. But if you have a closer look to, the, um, to this uh, circle tool, it searches the dark, dark object from the bottom to the inner circle. So either we change it to a bright object 
and then it work it works or uh, if you think no that we don't like this we could say okay we want to uh, change the um, uh, search direction and outwards and in this case we search from inside to outside uh, with the same result at the end we get the best fit circle here in the in, as a result and of course if you run the software now you see uh, also this tool follows like the caliper the uh, measurement uh, the the part so this is a second uh, option to do some measurement in the software and you can see it's very easy uh, easy to do it of course you can use this also as you uh, i think maybe i didn't mention it but as the complete software works we have here uh, the number of objects we are looking for it so we say we are looking for one object we, we didn't allow a tolerance so we it's all, only good if you have one object in the field of view uh, if there are more we want to have an error if there are less we also want to have an error so we have defined it here uh, you can also go to the parameters and uh, tell the system um, that you want to have more than one object and uh, you need maybe a minimum size of the object and also if you have uh, very similar objects which have only small differences you should have to uh, look to the correlation value how good the, the part fits together so maybe if you have an object which is similar to this one but it's missing this part or maybe this part then you have to add uh, change the correlation value uh, to uh, allow the this uh, matching tool to detect <clears throat> of course um, this uh, this uh, slight differences so uh, what what the parameters mean and so uh, as i mentioned before at the very beginning i really recommend the online help and you get the description to all the parameters uh, what you have to know about the tool and how to make it of course it works on all kind of um, gray images uh, sometimes so the default is that it fits in most cases but um, the basic uh, recognizer is a Kenny and uh, uh, so it has some uh, threshold values which allows you to adjust it if the contrast is not very good or it's horrible then you should uh, think about these contrast values in most cases if the uh, image is uh, is good uh, it works um, this uh, results right now what i mentioned yesterday also um, machine vision is always uh, a kind of uh, light lens and filter uh, that means um, if you have a good light lens and filter you have a good machine vision means you have also a stable uh, recognition and um, so uh, if, if you have a production line you have any way to see that the light and lens is good and then uh, uh, it's it's uh, you you have a trusty a trusted uh, machine vision solution. So this was for the moment uh, the two D stuff. I see the time is running very fast, and um, I I would say let's have a look uh, to to some three three D stuff. Therefore, uh, I would open simply. Um, one of the predefined uh, 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 predefined projects. Um, now I think you know how projects working, and um, here we can close this one now. And you see here, uh, this is now a point cloud. It's generated by a three D sensor. Um, I think uh, everybody who knows a little bit about uh, uh, 3D sensors uh, sees that this uh, accuracy is really good. Uh, the depth resolution is really good. This is uh, an image from um, from a uh, triangulation sensor. Um, and here we have uh, a similar tool 
to detect the objects, uh, we have this matching tool, which runs in, um, in the point cloud. Here we see the, the, uh, the different matched areas. And uh, of course, the boxes you see on top, this is the result. Um, it's not really necessary for matching to detect the part. This is more uh, a, a display to show that, uh, for example, a robot with a gripper has enough space around the part to pick it from this position. And um, the, to, uh, the tool basically works like uh, the, uh, the 2D matching tool. Uh, you train one of these uh, parts and you simply uh, store then these trained um, uh, representation of the part and it works. So this is very easy to use for many kind of things. Um, and uh, that you can see how it works and you can test it by yourself. If you don't have a 3D sensor, you could use um, uh, these tools. Another option is uh, to uh, do a similar thing like um, we did it before in the 2D area. You have also these object tools and to show these object tools uh, based on a 3D blob. Uh, we, you find here a lot of these. I would use uh, also to show you that uh, you don't need a real expensive sensor all the time when you do 3D. Uh, this is an example uh, for um, a blob tool, ob object matching tool in 3D based on an Intel RealSense sensor. Here you see um, uh, from the real side, uh, the, from the RealSense sensor, you get beside the point cloud, which we see here. Uh, this is the, you get also always a color image and you get also some additional images if you have the sensor. So for this sensor, we have uh, for the moment only the, um, uh, the color image stored additionally to the point cloud, simply to show the software have, has the option to handle these different data streams. Um, so as long as the whatever the sensor delivers to you, you can mix it up. This was one of the things when, uh, when I explained uh, that we have the one software, which, it, which is visible for all kinds uh, of uh, camera sensors and therefore for all kinds of applications. And in this case, uh, so if you run it, you see here there uh, is a parcel edit into the bigger box. And uh, each time we run it, you see the volume is going down and down and down. And at the end, um, uh, you, you can calculate, first of all, you can find the objects, of course, as, as you can, uh, as you do it in the 2D stuff. And finally, you can calculate, for example, the volume or whatever uh, is needed because you get all the information from these uh, blob tools. Um, if you if you have a look, it's uh, similar to the um, to the uh, to the two uh, D stuff. You have here uh, simply you we have here simply also used some uh, of the tools uh, to. Uh, detect the box and separate the box then later. Um, I would recommend that you have simply a look to these uh, projects to, to get it handy. And uh, what's always uh, good, if you have any questions, simply feel free uh, and uh, contact us. Uh, what can be done with these uh, tools, of course, um, you can simply see if there is a box inside, but uh, another object uh, detection would also be, I just realized it because it's also an object detection, we name it pin inspection. But finally, if you look to the pin inspection, the pin inspection is at the end a blob, an object, and we simply see uh, if there are enough objects, in this case, uh, pins, so you see these uh, hopefully the green pins, 
the green um, objects. These are these are objects generated based on the 3D blob tool. And then because you you get not only there is a black or white object, you get beside all the uh, x, y, z, and the rotation values to each of these blobs. Uh, you simply can say for the for each blob, ah yes, of course, there is uh, one of the pins and the position and the height of this uh, object is correct, which results at the end uh, in uh, a good or not good um, uh, connector. So this um, is uh, an, another ex example for, for let's say a kind of simp uh, object matching. You do the matching based on, you know, okay, I have n by n uh, objects which I need and they have to be at that position with that height. And uh, if they are not there, uh, then it's not correct the object. Um, to make these kind of tasks easier, I think maybe you have an idea what you have to do. It could not only be um, this kind of um, connector, it could also be an BGA. We have added a special grid command which enables you to make uh, the solution much easier if the parts you want to find or you have to detect are uh, somehow oriented in a geometrical order like on the on the connectors even if they are missing or some edi uh, ed uh, edit um, uh, pins you can use this grid command to make it very easy if um, uh, even if they are if they are not totally uh, symmetric because you can take a good part to train the grid and use then this trained grid to do the matching later based on the uh, object tool and for example <clears throat> in this case only comparing x y z values uh, to see if the if there is a pin and if it's in the um, in the right uh, area it's called um, uh, in the in the right position uh, in the circle position uh, the pin is in the circle position as you can see also uh, beside of um, of 2d uh, 3d whatever sensor and this is a very good sensor which we used has always artifacts so one kind one step is how to eliminate the artifacts and see the right stuff um, or use the right uh, co uh, coordinates for the uh, evaluation. In this case, there are a lot of additional tools. I, uh, I said yesterday, uh, before you use um, filters, try to improve the light. So in the laser scanner, the light is improved and therefore uh, you have to use some filters to eliminate the stuff which you don't need for the task you have to solve. Only to give you a short uh, idea of how how it works, but if you want to do something similar, I really recommend have a look to our projects and how to work it. And um, uh, to round it up, of course, you see this is a programming environment and you can, of course, oh, sorry, this was on the wrong display now. You can, of course, make um, uh, a nice user interface, more or less nice, it depends on where you simply have the start and stop button and uh, you simply can um, do all the stuff here on this position. Uh, so I will take the opportunity now simply to uh, overwrite this view so that I don't have to move the display next time when I demonstrate it again. So, and of course we can go back to configuration mode and uh, then we are here where we can have a look and uh, we see also the program which does it. As you can see, the program is not really complex um, or there are not so many instructions. The majority are some outputs here. You see these A commands. I think if you know the software, these are simply printing commands. So the main commands are, uh, the main task is done uh, until line 30 from two, where we either capture the image from the file, in this case, or from the camera, and uh, then in pay, uh, on, um, on line 30, we are finished 
with the evaluation. If there is more than one connector, we can also go through the different connectors. This is done also by this block tool. So you, the, the object matching tool uh, could be used for a lot of different uh, operations. Therefore, we have also these different uh, instructions for it. Maybe we have a look uh, for to round it up uh, to our um, uh, what we can do also with uh, the, the blob object tools or matching tools uh, and with um, with the robot. So I would show you at the end uh, a two D uh, solution with the robot, and um, you see this is uh, very easy. Uh, we have this um, um, oh, okay. Uh, yes, we don't do it here. This is a deep learning uh, matcher right now here additionally. So uh, we have the here uh, simply first of all the distortion correction, which is uh, important for for the robot and before you use this, you have, uh, you have to train this. There's, there are some examples also how to do um, how to do the distortion correction for a camera to uh, to meet the robot uh, coordinate system with the camera coordinate system, and it works. And um, maybe you have a look uh, to the uh, 3D. Um, Uh, example uh, for the robot and see ah, this is the wrong um, I have uh, we, we have to change the to to the robot uh, release this uh, then then let's have a short look to our deep learning and I show you this in the uh, in in the um, in the new release for the robot uh, system, so uh, for example, uh, what what's nice? I think so. Um, okay, so the first time uh, it runs, uh, we need a little bit of time to do the initialization of the tool, and this is. Uh, only at starter time to get it, and then you can go through these uh, bananas, and you get. Uh, and you see, this wouldn't work even it wouldn't work with uh, this uh, with uh, 3D. Uh, why? Uh, this um, uh, we cannot separate. Of course, we could separate this one and this one, but the blobs here at the end are not distinguishable. So the uh, the deep learning uh, access to um, uh, to the object detection in this case it is much better and of course uh, we have different uh, other uh, object detectors and we, we still um, we still increase this uh, the next few uh, weeks uh, to to more uh, pre-trained networks uh, which allows us then to show you simply uh, uh, what, what's possible to do with, um, uh, with uh, this deep learning access always when you say, okay, it's really difficult with mesh in vision. Uh, unfortunately, the initialization is right now a little bit long, but um, uh, it would be really difficult to do this characterization like, okay, I have a car, I have a car, I have a person. Uh, would be really difficult uh, uh, with um, uh, with non deep learning uh, applications, or uh, what we have here is uh, is a number plate detector, which is really uh, important uh, if you want to do these. Um, uh, parking lot or uh, um, uh, applications where you have to recognize the number plate in any case. And um, in this case, you see, however it looks like uh, at the end, um, 
and whatever Kari these, um, you simply get uh, the position of the number plate so that you can hide it later then. Um, this These are um, real nice things to make this with, with let's say, any kind of 3D or 2D, uh, you wouldn't be very happy with it at the end. Uh, we should have also some other images. Um, ah, yeah, here we see it. Now we have the more images. And this, this works really perfect. Um, uh, I think you don't uh, remember, the, uh, you, you could uh, agree that this kind of application would be really difficult um, for the um, for the standard object matching tools that's why i have it here so we are still uh, working on this also improving the speed for the recognition on a standard hardware and uh, especially for the embedded hardware systems we do have uh, right now uh, a speed acceleration based on the intel uh, myriad chip um, which allows you to to do this uh, much faster. If I didn't see any question or didn't hear any question, uh, I would now round it up and would say thank you very much. And uh, hopefully we uh, see us soon and uh, looking forward, um, yes, to hear from you. Bye-bye.